Hello, my name is Jonathan Burnside, and I'm here today to talk about best first search algorithms. Um, today we're going to cover uh, uniform cost search, greedy best first search, and A star search, not necessarily in that order. Um, all three of these can, are, are improved search techniques from our uh, best, or excuse me, breadth first search algorithm. Um, and before we get into what uh, defines a best first search algorithm, we want to We'll review just a little bit of breadth first search and what uh, what issues it has for us. So I'm just going to minimize this, and we have a uh, path planning demo here, um, originally created by by Brian Stout. You can find this on the internet if you want a, your own copy. But I'm actually running two instances of it. They're both going to use breadth first search. Uh, they have the same starting location with this green dot and the same uh, ending location with this red dot. So. That's our start state, that's our goal state, and we're going to find a uh, plan or plan a path between them. Um, so I'm going to start both the left and right side. The left side has no obstructions, the right side has this big black wall that we can't go through. So um, We might expect to get different results for this algorithm, but in breath first we will not. Um, so over on the right, you know, it's definitely going around the wall, which is somewhat what we expect. Um, but it's not an optimal path in terms of cost. It's only an optimal path in terms of uh, number of steps, number of nodes that we traverse. So this red line we see here, um, that's the shortest path from start to finish in terms of the number of nodes we visited. It's not necessarily the path we might expect a human or something to walk though. They'd probably follow this wall closer. Um, so. This is only optimal in terms of steps, not in terms of cost. Over here on the left, um, we're getting a very weird looking reaction, but it's, it's actually the same issue. I mean, we're even getting the same path as we are on the right um, without the wall here. This is the exact same cost in terms of steps going up and down this diagonal as if we had gone straight across, It'd be the same number of nodes, or even if we had gone down and back up, or or some sort of zigzag pattern across here. There's, there's a lot of uh, possible uh, solutions that would be considered optimal in terms of steps or number of nodes we actually traverse to. Um, so breath first is optimal in terms of steps, but not cost. Um, it's a complete algorithm and it's an exhaustive algorithm. And we can definitely see that exhaustive part here. Look at all these blue boxes. Those are all the nodes we had to search in order to find this eventual path. It's even even larger, no, actually it's about the same over here, maybe a few less because of the wall, um, but almost the identical solutions left and right with this wall. Lots and lots of nodes had to be searched to find this. So that's our goal today is to improve on that. So this is where best first searches come in. So the idea with a best first search is to um, sort our open list, our, our queue, uh, one of nodes that we're, we're still dealing with in our search algorithm, we're going to sort those by some value for best. Um, and that what's best can be subjective and we can uh, adjust that for, for our needs. Um, the first algorithm we're going to talk about though is called the greedy best first search algorithm. And we could consider this uh, algorithm as it's looking ahead. It's trying to estimate how close a given node is um, to our goal state, to our goal node. Um, and we're going to sort the nodes in our open list based on this estimation. So uh, we have a graph here and we'll start at node A. So with our standard algorithm, we, we enqueue our, our initial state and then we're going to loop while there are items in our queue. Um, for breath first, it's just a standard queue. For greedy best first, we're going to use a priority queue that is sorted based on distance to our goal. So we insert our A node, that's our start, um, and then we go into our loop and we pop off the first node in our, in our queue, which is only A. From here, we're going to insert all of its children, E, B, and F. If this was just standard breadth first, that would be the order we inserted them, E, B, F. Um, but for greedy best first, we're going to have these sorted by their distance to the goal. So E's distance to the goal of D is five, B's distance is four, 
f's distance is 6. So b goes first, followed by e and f. Um, just ignore that white space in between. That's because we know ahead of time we're going to end up sorting some nodes in front of E and F later, but uh, that's just to make these slides easier to create. But so far, we just inserted B, E, and F in that order based on this distance value, distance from B to the goal D, distance from E to the goal D, distance from F to the goal D. So, okay, we loop again because we're not at the goal. And we in DQ the first thing in our queue, that's B, and we start again. So, okay, we're going to insert its children. It's just C. C has a distance to the goal of 2.5. Um, 2.5 is less than E or F's distance to the goal, so C actually goes next. We loop again. We pop off the, that one, and we insert its children, D. Um, D's distance to the goal is zero, so it's definitely going first in our queue. We ran out of children, we loop again, we pop off the first node, D, and this time D is our goal. And we actually have a path uh, plant, A, B, C, D. Cool. So um, that, that looking ahead, that estimate, um, we would call that a heuristic. And, and that's all that a heuristic is. It's an estimate of how off or, or how far we are from our goal state. What is our current, the difference basically between our current state and our goal state? Some estimate of that distance or, or difference. Um, that's all a heuristic is. It's, it's a, just an estimate of that value. How close are we to the goal state we desire? Um, that's what we're going to sort by. Um, in this case, we sort by straight line distance. Um, going from node A to node B, what is the actual distance between those nodes? Uh, that would be our heuristic, just our straight line Euclidean distance value. So, greedy best first search is systematic. If we use it multiple times with the same set of data, we'll get the same results. It, it processes nodes in order. Um, greedy best first is informed, unlike our uh, breath for a search. Um, what it's informed about comes from this heuristic. It's informed about this estimate of how good any given node is uh, relative to our goal, how, how close we are to that goal. Unfortunately, greedy best first is not optimal. And we'll see this in a second. We cannot guarantee an optimal path. That doesn't mean we can guarantee it won't give us an optimal path. It just means we can't guarantee it will. Um, we do consider it a complete algorithm. The, uh, the star here is about the heuristic. If we, that estimate of how close we are to the goal, if we wrote that um, basically giving us the opposite, if it gave us you know, the, the, the inverse of that value, if we wrote it completely backwards, completely wrong, um, then greedy best first would no longer be complete. But uh, as long as that heuristic uh, does, does correctly or in some manner estimate the, the goal to the, the distance to our goal, um, com we can, would, this algorithm would be considered complete. And if it's complete, it's exhaustive, yeah, meaning we'll, uh, given enough time in a finite state, or excuse me, finite state space, uh, we will exhaust all possible options. So we would eventually find a solution, assuming there's a finite state space. Um, but since we are complete, we'll always find a solution, as long as that heuristic is not just terrible. Um, so we will need to add a heuristic cost member to our node class, and this is what we are ultimately going to sort by uh, in our priority queue. So I'm going to start to look at that code right now. Um, this is basically the same code as we had for our breadth-first search algorithm. We're just going to make a few changes. Uh, first, we're changing our queue to being a priority queue. And when you define a priority queue, you're going to have to define a function um, for sorting. So how does it compare to nodes um, for sorting purposes? So we'll define this function is greater in a second. Our path planner here has our search node and its parent node currently. Um, we're going to add, as mentioned, this heuristic cost. And again, heuristic cost is just an estimate between where we are 
and where we want to be, how, how far that is, how, what is the difference between our, our current state and our goal state. So this first node, we're starting at our start, so we're estimating the difference between start and goal. Um, but internally, when we add new nodes, uh, we'll be talking about where, where we currently are, our current successor node, and the goal. What are the difference, or what is the, S, the heuristic between those? Uh, so those, that's really all the changes we need to make to go from breath first to greedy best first search. Oh, excuse me, I do have to define that is greater than. But yes, just going to take in our two planner nodes and return which of their heuristic costs are greater. Um, let's actually alt tab for a second and look what we get as a difference. So here was our breath first for both of these. We see uh, the interesting path we get. Lots and lots of nodes were searched. Let's clear both of those. We're going to change the search algorithm here to best first. Greedy best first. And on the left, oh, that's so perfect. We go straight across like we'd expect. Far fewer nodes are searched. We get a really quick solution, uh, much lo less memory used. Path looks pretty good. We did say we're not going to get an optimal path, but that looks like an optimal path so far. What happens over here on the right, though, when we introduce a wall? Again, we found a solution much quicker. We s used far fewer nodes wherever searched, so it used less memory. Um, but look at this path. It's not an optimal path. You know, if this was a character in a game or something, it would have walked right up to the wall, then turned and kind of followed the wall around out this way. Um, so this is not an optimal path, though we were able to find it much quicker and using less memory than we would with uh, breath first. Well, I did not mean to restart the slides. So, good parts, much faster compared to breath first search. Uses much less memory, we saw that. Um, can find better solutions than breath first. So, so it's not, breath first is optimal in terms of steps. We're always going to find uh, the sh short, shortest existing path in terms of steps for breath first, um, but that doesn't guarantee that it's the best path for, for our use case. And we saw um, when just going directly between a start and goal with no obstructions, greedy best first actually gave us a better solution. Uh, the bad for greedy best first. We're not guaranteed to use minimal steps. We're not even optimal in any terms. We can't guarantee optimality at all. We saw that on the right side where we had that wall. Um, definitely did not find an optimal solution there. Um, it's definitely going to be dependent on our choice of heuristic. Uh, we'll talk a little more about heuristics and what makes a good heuristic. And Generally, though, if we can, we're going to use a straight line distance. Um, we'll talk about why a little bit more later. Um, the ugly, so you know, can find better solutions than breath first, can find worse solutions than breath first. So um, actually I'll, I'll tab here one more time, go back to this. On the left here we had a better solution than breath first gave us. On the right we, we would not consider this a better solution, at least in terms of optimality. Um, so it's definitely possible to get either a better or worse solution comparatively between uh, greedy and breath first search. Um, for greedy, in infinite spaces, may never find a solution. Um, that's only true if that heuristic value is fairly off. If, if we have a decent heuristic, uh, we can guarantee that the greedy best first search algorithm is complete. Um, but without that, that strong heuristic, um, then if we, we are ex an exhaustive formula, but if we're in an infinite space, we may never find a solution. Uh, this last uh, point might not be something you're going to run into a whole lot because we shouldn't be using bad heuristics generally. Um, due to its limitations, greedy best first search has limited application. 
Uh, this is true. Uh, you know, we see we're not getting uh, perfect solutions, per, you know, optimal paths necessarily, um, but it is very fast and very uh, low memory cost uh, relative to some of the other search algorithms that exist. Um, so there are spaces where greedy best first might be the best option for you. Um, specifically, if there's just not a whole lot of obstructions and things in your in your scene or wherever we're pathing around, so this might be an option to look into. So, greedy best first, we we consider it as looking ahead, trying to evaluate how good a node is based on how close or or how different what is, what the difference it is it has from our goal. So, we're looking forward, we're comparing how close are you to the goal. Um, and we saw some of the limitations of that. Another option we could do would be looking back. So instead of trying to evaluate this heuristic, this estimate of how close we are to the goal, we'll actually sort our nodes by how much it cost us to get there. So this looking back will be the total cost is from the start of our search to our current state. Um, and this, is also, this algorithm will also be based off of breadth first and will work very similarly. So, starting at A with a goal node of D, uh, we'll enqueue our first, our initial state A, we'll enter our loop while our queue is not empty, and we'll pop off the first child, our, uh, excuse me, first node in our queue, and then insert its children, E, B, and F. Uh, this time we'll be sorting by their distance from our initial starting state A. So. B has a distance of 4, E has a distance of 5, F has a distance of 6. So we get B, E, F. All right, then we run out of children, we restart, we go through our loop again, we dequeue the first node, B, and we're going to insert its children based on their distance uh, to, or excuse me, their distance from our initial state to the current child. So the only nodes B has is C. We know the difference be, or the distance between B and C is four, but the total di um, distance to get the C was actually from A is four plus four or eight. So that's gonna put it behind both E and F in our queue. So we enqueue C. All right, we come around again, we deal with E we, we dequeue it and we uh, out of our open list and we insert its children into our open list, in this case, D. Uh, D's total distance from our initial state, A, was five plus five or 10, putting it all the way at the end of our queue. Next, we deal with F. F has no children, so that's easy. Next in our queue is C, so we enqueue C's children. And we get an interesting case. C's child is D, and D already exists in our queue. Um, so we have to deal with duplicates here. Um, in this case, the new node D we found is a, actually a longer path. 4 plus 4 plus 4 for 12 versus the one we already had, 5 plus 5 for 10. Um, so we already had a shorter path to D in our queue, so when we find a longer path to D, we're just going to ignore it. And next in our queue, when we loop around, is D, and that's our goal node, and we've actually found a solution now. Uh, a, B, C, oh, no, I can't read. Uh, let's let the truck follow it. A, E, D, excuse me. I wasn't following the arrows over here correctly. So um, let's do that one more time. Um, but this time, all we've done, we're changed this distance from between C and D. Before that was a four, we're gonna change it to a one, which means this path to D, A, B, C, D, is actually shorter than A, E, D. And things are gonna go very similar at the start. We enqueue A, we enqueue its children, B, E, and F, in, in the, their order based on their distance from A. We deal with B, enqueuing C, we deal with E, enqueuing the first instance of D. Remember, this one has a, uh, a, a, val a distance of 10 from our initial state, 5 plus 5. Deal with F, who had no children. We deal with C, and remember now C has D as a child. 
this time we found a better path to D. Our old path was 5 plus 5. This one is 4 plus 4 plus 1 for 9. That's a better path to D. So when we find a duplicate and it's actually a better solution, we're going to swap it. We're going to get rid of the old D and insert the new D. Boop. And now our path will change ever so slightly. So, the algorithm we're discussing right now is actually called Uniform Cost Search or Dijkstra's Algorithm. Um, in terms of AI and path planning, or specifically game AI, you can use these two terms very indistinct. Nobody, nobody distinguishes between these uh, Uniform Cost and Dijkstra's. They'll, they'll know what you're talking about. Um, in some other groups and other parties, Dijkstra's algorithm might uh, refer to a slightly different algorithm in which we're finding the cost from an uh, initial state to all other states. Um, but that's at least rare in our, in our use case. So uniform cost or Dijkstra's algorithm generally mean the, the same thing. Um, so very much like our breadth first search, search or, or even more like our greedy best first search, we're going to use a priority queue and we have to sort that priority queue for our open list um, based on some value. Um, for a greedy best first, we used a heuristic estimating our distance to the goal. Here, we're going to use a value that, that represents our distance from our initial state. Um, we'll call this value the given cost, or sometimes the accumulated given cost, um, just referencing that it is all the way from our initial state to our current state. So, uniform cost search is systematic. Things are done in order. If we do the, do the same search, the same criteria two times in a row, we should get the same results. It is uninformed. We are not using a heuristic. We're, we're not sorting based on, on any sort of value of how necessarily good a, a node is compared to our goal. And we don't have that like the greedy best. We're only sorting by how much it cost us to get here. Um, we, we consider that value an uninformed value because we're calculating it as we go. Um, it is optimal, and this, this time it is optimal in terms of cost. This is our first search algorithm that is optimal in, in these terms. Uh, rest first was optimal, or excuse me, breath first was optimal in terms of steps, and greedy best first was not optimal. Uniform cost is optimal specifically in terms of cost. And this is usually the one that matters for us. Um, since it's optimal, it's complete. Since it's complete, it's exhaustive. So some key differences um, with uniform cost search compared to uh, greedy best first and breadth first search. So first, that duplicate checking. Um, we do need duplicate checking. We need to check if we've already found a, a node that a node art we're about to insert into our open list. We have to check if it's already been visited before. Um, and if it has been visited before, we check, well, is it a better path to that? Do we have a lower given cost with the, with the new uh, way that we found to the same uh, node that we found as a duplicate? Um, if that is true, if we have found a better path to this duplicate location, um, we're going to swap out the old one with the new one. Um, in the case that we uh, don't find a better solution, we just ignore the, the worse solution. Um, yes, um, since we can, we can actually, we're going to be using uh, terms of cost, um, we can actually have costs on our nodes. Um, so, so for things like path planning across a terrain, uh, we might have weights uh, based on the terrain itself, like maybe it's harder to move in this location representing things like uh, rocky mountains or, or swamp or water or something that might be uh, harder to move across. Uh, we can actually weight the cost of moving to those nodes. So um, to implement this algorithm, we are going to uh, compare to our breadth first search algorithm, we're going to add a given cost member to our planner node. Um, and this is going to be very, very similar to what we did with uh, greedy, greedy, for, greedy best for search, um, just where it sorted by a heuristic, we're instead going to sort by a given cost. So starting with uh, breadth first, um, we do have our priority queue, we're still sorting by is greater, 
but our is greater is not using heuristic, it's using given cost. And sure enough, our planner node has a value for given cost. And we can see down here, we're checking if we found um, our successor node, if it already is in our visitor list, meaning we've already been here, um, this is going to change a little bit. So if, so if it's not in our visitor list, sure, we, we make our new node and we calculate our uh, given cost. We'll see some more of that in a second. But if we did find it in our visitor visited list, we'll have to make some alterations here. So first, we have to set given cost. Um, remember, given cost represents your distance from the initial state, uh, or, or cost to get to the, to the current state from the initial state. So if our, our first node in our, in our open list here is, is the first node in our, is our initial state, basically, um, this given cost will always be zero. Or what is the difference between our initial state and our initial state? Well, zero. Um, down here where we're creating a new successor node, our given cost will be equal to um, our, basically our parent for this new node, what is what, were, what was their cost, plus the edge cost. Um, the edges represent our adjacencies or our neighbors, um, who's next to us, and edge.cost is how far apart these two neighboring uh, nodes are, how much it costs to get us get between those. Down here, if we found uh, this successor, if it already exists in our visited list, we're gonna check, well, is it better than the one we already have? So if our the given cost we calculated, if that's less than the given cost of the node that already exists in our visited list, uh, then we're gonna swap out. We're basically we're gonna take out the old one from our, from our open list here. We're gonna reset its uh, given cost and parent to the new, new nodes we just, and new values we just calculated and then we're gonna put it back in. So take it out, reset the, the values, put it back in, we're basically just replacing that node. And let's alt tab and see what this looks like. All right, so here was our greedy best first, straight line across, um, and then over here with the uh, wall, we get a pretty quick solution, but not necessarily an optimal path. Let's clear both of those and switch to uh, uniform cost. We see, um, in terms of the area it's searching, the amount of nodes we're, we're looking at is, is very comparable to breadth first. We're, we're definitely using a lot of memory. We're looking at a lot of nodes. Um, this, the search sort of space that we, we actually uh, search is not quite the same as breadth first, where it was kind of a box pattern. We're getting more of a circle um, because it's uh, going out in, in terms of cost as, as actual sort of distance as opposed to a number of nodes. So it costs a little more to go diagonal than to go left, right, up, or down. Um, so we get kind of a circle search pattern instead of a square here. But on the left, we can see we get a very optimal path. We're not getting weird up and down angle ones like we got from breadth first. Now we're going straight across with uniform. Over to the right, we get a really uh, good path as well. It goes, you know, unlike uh, greedy best first, it doesn't like walk into the wall first. It knows to go around the wall. Um, and this is the shortest possible path in, in terms of costs we're getting here. Um, so that's, that's the big benefit with the uniform cost. We're, we're getting the optimal solution in terms of cost. Um, but we can, hopefully we start to see all these blue nodes. These are all nodes we visited to, to figure this out. Um, and that's, that's going to take a lot of time and memory. Um, very comparable to breadth for a search in, in terms of uh, the number of nodes we're going to end up looking at. Um, but unlike breadth for a search, we get a, a solution that is optimal in terms of cost instead of just terms of steps. So, yes, as I said, consumes a lot of memory, takes a lot of CPU time. Um, it's optimal in terms of cost, so it's better than, or at least a bit better for that, that idea than breadth first, or yeah, breadth first search, but not nearly as fast as greedy best first typically, um, using a lot more memory and CPU time relative to this. If only there was some way we could combine the benefits of greedy best first, how fast it is and, 
and uniform cost search, how it actually gives us an optimal solution in terms of cost. Um, and of course, there is a way. Uh, it's called the A star search algorithm. Um, A star uh, came out came out came out with some work uh, at the Stanford Research Institute back in like the late '60s. Um, it was developed by three gentlemen: Nils Nilsson, uh, Bertram Raphael, and Peter Hart. You don't really need to know any of this. Um, I just like to get into it a little bit uh, in case you're interested, because the name is kind of interesting. A star. Um, they were actually w working on uh, improving search algorithms. Um, we're working with uh, mostly with uh, improving Dijkstra or uniform cost, um, and actually created an algorithm they called A1. Um, then made some improvements and created A2, and continued making improvements, and eventually uh, sort of proved that they, there wasn't any better ways to uh, improve their results, at least in the, the constraints they were under. Um, and the result was A star. And that's what we have now. So, um, the idea with A star though is it's very similar to the things we've been talking about, either greedy best first or uniform cost, it, and it is sort of a breadth first based algorithm. Um, but look, where in greedy best we are sorting by the heuristic, and uniform cost we're sorting by this given cost. Um, for A star, we're going to sort by both of those values. Now, one thing to note for this the heuristic. A heuristic value can be what we call admissible. Um, and for A star to be optimal, the heuristic we use must be admissible. And all admissible means is that the heuristic will never overestimate. Um, we'll never you know, call our, our, estimate, our heuristic estimation function and get a value that is actually larger than the real difference between these two states or the, the real path we've found. Um, so it, it would never estimate a solution that, that is larger or costlier than the real one. Never overestimates. Um, very often will underestimate. Um, so this is why we use straight line distance. There's, you know, um, short of bending time and space, there's no real way to get between two points faster than straight line distance or as the crow flies. Um, this is often an under estimate for estimation of the real cost. We might have to walk around some obstruction or something where the straight line distance assumes we can go right through it, um, guaranteeing that we'll never overestimate um, and making our heuristic, in this case, admissible. So A star search is systematic. Uh, we will get sim you know, the same results uh, multiple times in a row if we run the same algorithm with the same inputs. Um, it is informed. It gets the informed state from being similar to the greedy best first, from that heuristic cost where we're, st we're just estimating a given node's uh, value or, or cost rel or relative to the goal node. How far apart are we? Well, it, what is the difference between our current state and our goal state, basically? Um, a star is optimal, assuming that heuristic is admissible. Um, we keep that in mind. It never, ever overestimates. We can guarantee that, that our, our heuristic never overestimates, that it is admissible, then we can guarantee that A star will find an optimal solution. Um, A star is complete. Um, just like the uh, greedy best first algorithm was complete, we have that asterisk there. Um, just in case you write a terrible, terrible heuristic that does the opposite of what you want, then, then the algorithm will not be guaranteed to find a solution anymore. As long as that heuristic is not uh, terrible, um, we can, we can uh, guarantee that uh, A star will, will complete, will find a solution, assuming one exists. Um, and since, you know, if it's optimal, it's complete. If it's complete, it is exhaustive, and A star will exhaust uh, all possibilities given enough time. Um, one other thing we can add to the A star search algorithm is what we will call a heuristic weight. Um, and basically, ultimately, we're going to be adding together the given cost and the heuristic cost values. Uh, this heuristic weight value will just be sort of a, uh, a knob we can use to control some, some how the algorithm ultimately works, either making um, it more like uniform cost or more like greedy best first search by either weighting the heuristic side of that given plus heuristic uh, value 
higher or lower. We'll see that a little more in a second. Um, but, oh, there we go. Yes, final cost is just equal to given cost plus heuristic cost scaled by this heuristic weight. Um, final cost is what we're going to search by. So um, in greedy best first, we search sort of sorted by the heuristic cost. In uniform cost search, we sort it by the given cost. In A star, we'll sort by the final cost, um, which is basically just a, a combination of given cost and heuristic cost. So if we go look at our algorithm, um, so we're actually starting from something very similar to the uniform cost. Uh, we do have the, the is visited where we check if we found a better path to a given node um, or we throw it out if not. Um, our is greater than for our priority queue is now sorting by final cost instead of given or heuristic. And our planner node actually has both heuristic given cost um, and we'll add final cost as well so that we can sort by that. Uh, so first node, it's given cost again is zero. That's how much it cost us to get here. Uh, heuristic cost is just that estimate from where we are to where we want to be. And final cost, the thing we actually sort by now, is just given cost plus heuristic cost scaled by this weight. So for right now, just think of this weight as being one. So given cost plus heuristic cost scaled by one. Doesn't really do anything as long as it's one. And down here, nodes given cost plus heuristic cost plus that weight again to find that final cost. Um, basically though, this weight, if we make it larger than one, we're making this side of the addition larger. We're telling it basically, I want more heuristic cost, less given cost. If I make this weight smaller, I'm telling it I want more given cost and less heuristic cost. And this will basically kind of shape the results to be more like uniform cost when H weight is low or more like greedy best first search when H weight is high. Um, as soon as we make this higher than one though, uh, this heuristic is probably not actually admissible anymore. So we're not guaranteeing optimality. Um, but that's very similar to greedy best first. So higher weight, more like greedy, lower weight, more like uniform cost. It's down here. Um, if we do find a successor node and we're replacing uh, that node, we do have to, of course, reset final cost. Um, so based off of the given and heuristic cost values the same way. So make sure you set your final cost in all three of these cases, your initial spot, um, your, your duplicate spot, and your new node spot. And before we get into the problems though, let's go look at the results. So let me clear these, look at these giant state spaces, all this thing, area we, we searched in uh, uniform cost. We'll clear that, clear this one, and we'll find A star instead. Oh, look at that. So over here on the left, we're getting that, that very optimal solution straight across. Very few nodes were ever looked at, and it returned quicker than I could get my cursor over here to click start. So definitely really fast. Um, over here on the right, we're getting uh, very, very great results as well compared to the other searches. So uniform, we searched all these, all these white, all this white space. We ended up having to search those nodes in the uniform cost algorithm. Here we can clearly see we're not searching nearly as many and looking at our ultimately our, our result returned path. Um, this is totally an optimal path going around the wall um, and following it and going down to the goal. Unlike if I were to uh, switch this to greedy best first again, just as fast, maybe a little faster but the solution wasn't optimal there like it is for A star. Ooh. So problems with A star search. Consumes more memory than greedy. Well, we, we can see, hopefully we can kind of see that. Um, it, it's not, you know, it depends on our, our state space and things, but it's, is going to be used a little more memory than greedy best first, but typically not as much as uniform cost. I was going to take more CPU time than greedy 
but less than uniform costs. So, so kind of, you know, in terms of memory and cost, we, we can put it right in between greedy and uniform cost search. Um, in general, A star is a good default for, for our, any sort of search uh, algorithm we want. Um, it's going to be fairly efficient. It's going to give us optimal results. Um, and do it reasonably fast, but but nothing is free. You know, as we see, it does it does cost more than greedy best first um, in, in both time and CPU, or excuse me, CPU time and memory. Um, but remember that that weight value. We can actually uh, slide that weight value around. So if we if we make it a little higher, um, we're going to be more like greedy best first, and if we make it lower, we're going to be more like uniform cost search. Um, offhand, I can't think of any reason we'd make it lower to be more like uniform cost search as we, we should already be finding optimal solutions um, with, a, with a weight of one, a heuristic weight of one. Um, but making it higher than one will make it more like greedy. And as we you know, have just mentioned, greedy runs faster and uses less memory. Um, but greedy is not uh, optimal or guaranteed to find an optimal solution. So, so we can make that uh, H weight a little higher and start to make this A star algorithm run faster and use a little less memory, um, but we can't guarantee we get optimal solutions anymore. Though in, in, in games and a lot of other path planning, planning solution or, or spaces, we're going to find that, that we don't have enough obstacles and things that, that the end user or anybody noticing is going to care about. Um, some mild changes in optimality. So we, so we often can weight this, uh, this uh, heuristic weight a little higher um, to get speed ups, making it more like greedy, um, but it, it will still be okay if we don't have too many weird obstacles and things that we're gonna get caught in and, and get weird looking results. Thank you.